Welcome to Distressed to Joyful, Bailey's Way. I'm your host, Bailey Raber, here to enlighten you and the rest of the world about one of the most misunderstood mental health disorders out there, bipolar disorder. In each episode, we'll learn more about my personal journey with bipolar 2 disorder, how I've struggled with it, and how I've learned to overcome those struggles. Together, we'll laugh, we'll cry, and most importantly, we'll have fun. You'll leave each episode feeling hopeful and stocked full of useful information on how you can better yourself and the world around you. Hello, friends. Welcome to season five of Distressed to Joyful Bailey's Way. I am so, so, so excited to start a new season with you guys and a new year. I have been a little MIA. (laughs) I'm sure you guys noticed that, and we will discuss that here in just a moment. But first, I do want to go over some of the changes and the not changes that will be happening with season five this year. So, oh my gosh, if you've been tuning in, I cannot remember if I mentioned this or not. I'm pretty sure that I have. So if you listened to the last few episodes of season four, (laughs) then you might remember that I had talked about going to India to get married. And with that, there came a lot of things to do, (laughs) as one would expect when planning a marriage, especially on the other side of the world. So because of that, I haven't really had a lot of time to make a bunch of changes to season five like I do typically every year. If you guys have been around since day one or even since, you know, season three, then you know that each year I like to do a new cover art. I like to do a photo shoot and just change it up. I'm a fashion designer, so I love a reason to make an outfit and have a photo shoot. And I use every single podcast season or every single year to start a new season of the podcast to create new outfit to wear, a new cover art, all new, new, fun, fun. But this year is different. I am actually still in India. You might notice that the background, if you're watching on YouTube, is a lot different than what it usually is. And that is because I am, like I said, still in India, which means I've not been able to do some of the things that I typically do with the start of every new podcast season. So that actually is a lot of why I chose that we're going to talk about the importance of learning to be flexible today. We'll get into all of that here in just a moment, but I do want to kind of go over what is going to stay the same and what might be a little bit different in this upcoming season with you guys. So the first thing, like I mentioned, cover art is staying the same. The format of the show is staying the same. So we're still going to do every single Monday, you know, once a week. I'm still keeping Travel Tales, the mini series that I have started, which I started last season. I think you guys are loving it. I've seen some really great numbers. So if you guys hate it, I mean, you can tell me. (laughs) I won't be mad, but I am going to start incorporating a lot of what I do to help me manage and, you know, regulate my bipolar disorder when I travel. Something I've noticed that has talked about a lot in bipolar disorder support groups that I'm in on Facebook and even just on Instagram randomly is traveling and having bipolar disorder can sometimes not go very well together, but I have found a way to make that work. And so I'm going to start going over those things with you guys in a bit more depth this year, especially having been traveling for the last couple of weeks. (laughs) I've noticed that I have a lot um, of things I can share with you on what I've done to just keep myself in check because it's not easy. It's not easy, I'll tell you that. And it does take a little work and it takes some time and some effort. But again, we'll go over all of that later <laughs> later on in the season. I can't give you everything all at once <laughs> as much as I would love to. Um, so finally, one of the things I'm going to add this year is guests. I'm going to add guests to season five. I promise you this for sure. I'm actually going to put the link for the sign up in today's show notes. So if you are interested in becoming a guest on the show, just please be aware of that. It is all mental health focused. You do not have to have bipolar disorder, but we are going to talk about mental health. So if you do not have a mental health disorder yourself or anybody that, you know, in your family or your spouse or anybody close to you that has anything, then 
that's not for you. <laughs> I am sticking with the theme of mental health, especially bipolar disorder. But if you have, you know, something you want to share, a story, if you have, you know, overcome some difficulties with your own mental health, or if you've learned to navigate it with your partner or your family or your kids, like this is stuff that I really want to share. So you are going to be a great person to be a guest on the show. And I'm so excited to start introducing guests. Uh, I don't know how many I'm going to do per month. I'm not even going to give you a number because if I give you something and I mess it up, then I'm going to feel real bad. <laughs> and I'm working on not over promising because I'm really good at that because I'm a doer and I like to do things, but then I try to do too many things. <laughs> So another announcement is I am married now. Well, I'm having another wedding later, (laughs) but we are done with our Indian wedding here in India. I am going to be sharing videos on my YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed, now is a good time to do so. The link is in the episode description and the show notes. But yeah, so an Indian wedding was so much fun. It was so chaotic, but it was great. Like I am going to be blogging about it and I can't wait to share all of that with you guys because my perspective being, you know, born and raised American, it's a lot different than, you know, people who are born and raised in India or even, you know, born and raised in the U.S. who are from an Indian family. Like they have a different perspective of these weddings than someone like me would. So if you're interested, again, um, you can subscribe to my blog and I will be putting that out within the next year. (laughs) Let's be realistic. It's going to probably take a year to get all that out. (laughs) And finally, I have something really cool to share with you guys that is specifically for 2024. So I wish I would have brought it with me. It is not in my possession at the moment, but I designed a calendar, a wall calendar to help me track my medication intake. Something I've noticed is that I will take a medication and five minutes later, I will be like, oh, wait, did I take my meds today? Completely forgot, even though I literally just did it. And even my, well, sorry, my husband, (laughs) my husband now, even my husband, he will try to keep me on track. He'll ask me if I took my meds and I'll be like, ooh, I don't remember. So one of the things that we did last year in order to help remember was I literally my Doug the Pug calendar that's on the wall. I wrote, like I wrote, I drew in a checkbox on every single day. And as soon as I took my meds, I would check it off. But guys, drawing those boxes every day got to be really annoying. And so I actually stopped doing that at one point. And so I developed a wall calendar. So that way I don't have to draw those damn boxes. They're already there for me. It's hanging in my bathroom. So that way, like, that's where I keep my meds is in the sink, in in the sink, (laughs) in the bathroom next to the sink. So that way, as soon as I'm done taking it, I can check it off the calendar. But what's more, besides just the check boxes, I also have added positive affirmations, one for every single month, because that is something that I am working on this year is positive affirmations and keeping my mind in a healthy positive mental state. (laughs) I've been horrible at that. 2023, I was full of negativity and it sucked. And I realized one of the things that I need to do to help get myself back on track is repeat positive affirmations every single day. So I have curated a new positive affirmation for every single month. And I just am so excited to get to use this. And I hope it's going to be helpful for you guys. I literally created this for myself because it is helpful for me. But if it could be helpful for you or your loved one or your partner or somebody that you know, the link is in the episode description and in the show notes. You can purchase it from my Etsy shop. It's a great way to support me, but also it's more importantly a way that you can help yourself and stay on track with taking your medications. Okay, so really quick, I'm going to do a self-reflection corner, even though I am not currently in my self-reflection corner. (laughs) Whatever it is what it is. So I have had a really, 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 really hard time of letting things go. And this has been a theme throughout my entire life. I just have a hard time of letting things go. So for example, if somebody hurts me, and especially if it was intentional, 
it really sticks with me for a really, really, really long time. And sometimes it actually doesn't even go away, which makes it really hard for me to forgive that person and or move on. So I thought about this, like, why is this so, why is it so hard for me to let things go? Guys, when people unintentionally hurt you, when they do something on accident that is hurtful, those things, I have a hard time of letting go. (laughs) And it sucks. It sucks for me because it's only affecting me. They've apologized. They've asked for my forgiveness. I might tell them that I forgive them, but then I'm still holding on to this. And this is only hurting me. This is doing nothing good. And I have done a lot of self-reflection and I have figured out why. So my theory is that I don't know how to let go of things and move on because I was never taught how to, (laughs) nor did I have any role models in my household who were doing this, who could, you know, show me how. (sighs) So growing up in my household, if somebody hurt you, they weren't necessarily required to apologize. And if they did apologize, it was probably forced and not genuine, making it really hard to accept it as an apology. So in our house, we basically just shoved everything under the rug and we went on with our lives as if the person next to us never did anything to hurt us. So guys, this is a super, super toxic way to live. And that's because unresolved hurts stay inside of us and they can later cause more problems in our life and our future relationship with others. (laughs) So that said, I don't know how to fix this. I really don't have a solution right now on how to learn to move forward with things. I know that it's a problem that I have and I also know that I need to find a solution, but I don't have one yet. And guys, here's the thing. That's okay. Part of self-discovery is figuring out where your problems are. You might not know how to fix it, but if you can at least pinpoint, okay, where are my weaknesses? Where do I need to improve? Where can I do better? You can then Find someone who can help you. Find a book, find a podcast, a YouTube video. Talk to your therapist, which is exactly what I'm going to (laughs) do. So that is part of why I wanted to bring this one up. This is a different one, a different type of self-reflection corner, I should say, because I don't have a solution, but I plan to find one. And that's something that I'm going to focus on this year with my therapist, Chelsea, is figuring out how to let go and move on. On. Because like I said, holding on to this pain is only causing more suffering for me. Nobody else, just for me. And I'm tired of it. <laughs> I want to feel better. I want to be able to move forward and do so much quicker. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into today's episode, the importance of learning to be flexible in life. Okay, so if you haven't already guessed, this topic was chosen for the first episode of season five because the end of season four did not go as planned. Uh, It actually abruptly ended with no warning at all. So sorry, (laughs) y'all. I don't remember if I already apologized. (laughs) So, so, so sorry about just leaving y'all hanging like that. That is not my intention. I don't like to do that. But the last five weeks of 2023 were just pure chaos. And guys, you just, oh my God. I was not expecting it to be as chaotic as it was. So there's that. Lots of anxiety meds were taken. (laughs) So during the last five weeks of 2023, I was finishing my Chanel inspired jacket for my couture dressmaking class, which required a lot of hand sewing. And I spent at least 20 hours working on it for the first week of December alone. (laughs) Yeah, it was due on December 14th and I was leaving the country December 12th. So I had to turn it in before then. And that was all kinds of chaos. Um, I had to help finish planning our wedding that happened here in India. I had to help plan the mini honeymoon that we took to Thailand. And I had to close up one million and one other things (laughs) that we needed to do before we could leave for our extended trip to India. So it was just a lot. If you can't tell by, you know, all of that, it was a lot. And I, I really thought I was going to be able to finish my podcast and finish a couple other things during that time. My birthday photo shoot, I didn't get to finish that. 
Uh, I didn't get to plan things for the end of this podcast season, nor for the or for la- end of last season, or for the beginning of this one. I oh my god, things with my Etsy shop I wasn't able to finish. I had to bust it to finish some things for some clients. <laughs> that was also chaos. And so because of all of this, I just went completely MIA from both releasing new podcast episodes and from my social media pages for my podcast because I was just completely overwhelmed. Y'all, I was so stressed. I remember screaming and crying one day because I was just so, so stressed. (laughs) So that said, I want to take some time to talk about my experiences with learning to be flexible and why it is so important. So first off, if this is your first time tuning into this podcast, allow me to inform you that I am the ultimate planner, (laughs) the ultimate planner. And by ultimate, I mean that I have the next six years of my life planned out. I plan my annual birthday party at least six months in advance, and I usually plan my vacations anywhere from six to 18 months in advance. So yeah, I love me a good plan, but Because I like to plan things, I used to have a really hard time when things didn't go according to plan. And by this, I mean I would panic, I would have a meltdown, I would cry, I would scream, I would shut down, or I would just cancel the whole damn thing because one little detail went wrong. Or the whole damn thing went wrong. Whatever. (laughs) It really was not a pretty thing to witness. I hate to admit those were some terrible days, but you know... (sighs) that's life. It is what it is. And I've learned from it. So change can often be very, very scary and very hard. I know this firsthand. And as humans, it is so much easier for us to just stay in our comfort zones, although it's not necessarily the best place to live. So the reason why is because in the words of the Greek philosopher uh, Heraclitus, (laughs) Herculitis. <laughs> Y'all, I should have listened to the pronunciation of this word. I'm so sorry. The the Greek philosopher Hera, Heraclitus. Heraclitus. That's my fourth and final answer. <laughs> but he says, the only constant in life is change. And because a girl is a huge Disney fan, I do want to include the, the lyrics from the song Just Around the Riverbend from Pocahontas that go, what I love most about rivers is you can't step in the same river twice. The water's always changing, always flowing. And I was singing that in my head and not out loud because my singing voice is not the best. <laughs> and that song's going to be stuck in my head now for the next five days, but These quotes were brought in to say that life is always changing, guys. Life is always changing. And there are two options with that. You have two options. You can either learn to adapt and change with life as time goes on, or you can resist the change, stay stuck in your ways, and probably lose some people and or spend your time fighting the change that life brings. (laughs) So I used to do the latter. I would resist change like you have never seen before. God, it was so bad. And you know what that did to me? It made me really, really unhappy. So looking back, the period in my life when my resistance to change really began was after graduating high school. So this is a huge time in our lives because it forces change upon us. School is no longer required. You aren't going to get to see your friends every day. And now you have to make some grown-up decisions regarding what the hell you're going to do with your life. So this was a really, really scary time for me, y'all. It was super scary. While most of my friends all moved away to go to college and began to create new lives for themselves, I ended up staying in my hometown and I continued to work at the same restaurant that I'd been working at since junior year of high school while also adding in a daytime job so that I could move out of my parents' house. So, yes, let me let me be frank, there was change because moving into my apartment was a big change. I had my own apartment, I had bills to change, bills to change. I had bills to pay. But I was unable to move on with my life in the way that I saw my friends doing. So 
they were all happy, experiencing new things, college life, making new friends, trying new things. I've said that twice now. (laughs) And they were all happy and I felt stuck. I felt stuck and it really, really sucked. So I continued with my terrible eating habits, which caused me to gain a ton of weight in a very short amount of time. I continued to party like I did in high school, which basically turned me into an alcoholic, which led to more problems in my life, which (laughs) if you've listened to any of my episodes on my sobriety or alcoholism, then you know exactly what I'm talking about there. And the list just goes on. So it wasn't until I was able to understand that change is a good thing and that it's important to embrace it that I was able to find true happiness for myself. So that said, let's take a moment to talk about what we can do to help us learn to embrace change because that is something I had to do, y'all. As someone who used to hate change and used to resist it, I had to learn to embrace it. And that is part of what has made me the joyful Bailey that I am today is learning to embrace the change and all that life brings you. Because here's the thing, guys. If you are not receptive to change, life may throw something so good at you. It may throw you what you've dreamt of or something that you maybe didn't dream of. Maybe it's not exactly how you pictured, but it's still so damn good. And if you're not ready, if you're not ready to accept that this change that's coming on to you, you might miss out on this damn good thing that life is trying to throw your way. Like, Seriously, guys, in terms of dating, had I not been open and receptive to going on literally over a hundred first dates with so many different types of guys, <laughs> like Moni was the first Indian guy I went on a date with, but I went out with all different types, Latinos, Europeans, Australians, Canadians. I, I dated all different types of guys, none of which were fitting in a box because I didn't have a box of the specific type of guy I was looking for. But had I not been open and willing to go on a date with an Indian guy, a culture I knew very little about, and a type of guy I've never dated before, had I not been receptive to that, I would not be sitting here in India right now having just had an Indian wedding marrying the love of my life. I would not have him had I not been receptive to that. That was change. (laughs) That was change for me. And it turned out to be the best thing that could have ever happened. So guys, seriously, if that's not enough to convince you to try to learn to embrace change, I don't know what else. (laughs) I don't know what else I can do. (laughs) So let's go ahead and take a moment to talk about what we can do to learn to embrace change. Let's get back to that. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked. I was I was excited. <laughs> so I found an article on psychcentral.com titled Change is the only constant and how to embrace it. It was written by Hope Gillette and it was medically reviewed by Marnie A. White, PhD, MS. And they give a few recommendations on how you can embrace change. So the first one that they give is find your people. So in case you weren't aware, y'all, us humans, we are social animals and we need other people to survive. We literally do. So when you have people around you who both love and support you, these people can help you move through life's difficult changes. I know this from, you know, from experience. I have an amazing group of friends and without without them, I don't think I could have gotten through a lot of things like the pandemic or God, changing jobs. So many things have happened in the last five years of my life and I have had just incredible people to support me through it. But it's also worth noting that sometimes support groups are necessary so that you can find other people to lean on and learn from who have maybe already been in your shoes. So some examples of some support of some support groups would be the first one that always comes to mind is Alcoholics Anonymous, also known as AA which I was never a part of. I do know that there's another one called Al-Anon. And I think Al-Anon is for the the spouses or like the partners of people who are in Alcoholics Anonymous. So that's two different types of support groups there. 
There's also the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or it's also known as NAMI. And there's Bipolar and, oh, sorry, there's Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, which is DBSA. And there's some others that I'm going to list in or that I'm going to link in today's show notes. So if you are looking for a support group, I highly recommend it. I personally, I haven't. Well, I've been to one support group one time and that was before the pandemic. And then the pandemic happened and I just didn't go back. But I do think that they are very necessary and I might actually end up finding one in the next year or two. Who knows? (laughs) But I think that it's important to find people who can understand the path of life that you're on. It is very, very helpful, especially when change comes through and you have to start adapting. (laughs) So another thing that this article lists is to work on becoming more self-aware. So I'm going to read directly from the article and it states, have you ever asked yourself why change feels uncomfortable? Getting in tune with why you may resist change can be helpful, says Dr. Jen Hardy, a licensed psychologist from Maryville, Tennessee. When we recognize that it comes from our temperament or difficult experiences earlier in our life, then we can approach ourselves with more compassion. Which that I honestly hadn't thought about until I read this because You know, the compassion piece is something that I personally struggle with. But if you can understand the backstory as to why you don't want to, you know, why you are not okay with changing or the specific type of change or whatever it is, you can be kinder to yourself as you work through it. Because guys, here's the thing. Like I've said before, life is going to change and you can either let it change around you, resist it and be unhappy as fuck like let me tell you unhappy as fuck (laughs) or you can learn to embrace it and move with it and grow and when you can do that it just it makes life so much easier and just so much more joyful (sighs) I feel like a broken record (laughs) but (laughs) lastly this is one that I wanted to throw in there is practicing gratitude so the article actually says to list out the positives But in my opinion, gratitude is just so much more important because it's a bit deeper and it's just more useful in the long run. And if you haven't already tuned into how, I think it's the episode is called How Gratitude Changed My Life. I'm going to link it in the show notes, so don't worry. I'll, too many episodes, can't remember all the names. But um, I am a humongous fan of gratitude. It's part of why I've become the joyful woman that I am today. It's learning to appreciate the small things in life. It makes the big things even more better. It really does. Also, I will say that if you can appreciate things, anything, anything in life, if you can appreciate just one fucking thing while you are weathering a storm or going through some uncomfortable change, it will help make life easier. And I'm telling you guys this from experience, okay? <laughs> I truly am. <laughs> All right, so now that we've discussed change and why it's important to embrace it, I'm going to leave you with this. So as we have begun the new year, I'm going to challenge you to take a real hard look at your life and decide if there's something about your life that you'd like to change. Everybody does resolutions and, you know, that's great, but this is a little different, y'all, because we're not looking at the things that we want to do. We're going to look at something about ourselves that we want to do differently. Like maybe you want to start eating healthier meals on a daily basis. Or maybe you want to start eating more fruits and vegetables. I mean, that's a great place to start. Or maybe you want to create a bedtime routine habit so you can get better sleep. Or maybe you want to learn how to budget and stop overspending. (laughs) All of these are things that I have learned in the past. So I'm just throwing mine right at you. (laughs) So whatever it is that you come up with, I challenge you to find just one thing that you would like to change about your life. And I challenge you to set out and change it. I challenge you to set out and change your life in just one small way. And I will tell you from experience that Change is so uncomfortable, but the more you start thrusting yourself into change, 
the easier it will get. It is hard. It is hard. It's going to suck. It's going to feel bad. You're going to hate it. But push yourself through it and you will learn to appreciate it. You will. I promise you guys, all of this is coming from experience. So lastly, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram at distressed to joyful underscore Bailey's way to tell me what you decided to change and how you felt working on it or working through it or however. I would love to hear from you some of your experiences now that I've shared mine. <laughs> Win of the week. Win of the week. Okay, so... The win of the week segment was created for you guys as a way for all of us together to spread some positivity and share a good thing or two that has happened in life recently. Whether that has been that you've received a job offer to the company of your dreams or that you have finally gained the energy to shower after a few days of a depressive episode. No matter what it is, no win is too small to celebrate here on the show. And today I'm going to give a win And my win of the week is that I got LASIK surgery recently. Yes, and I have the stupid ugly glasses to prove it. Let me put them on for a moment here on YouTube. (laughs) These are horrible. Today was my last day wearing them, so I took them off to record because I really hate them. They're so bad. I look like such a dork. But fun fact, uh, LASIK, while we all know is so expensive in the U.S., it's actually very inexpensive in India because... (laughs) The medical field is not a business in India. It's actually there to help people. (laughs) Anyways, so I'm going to create a YouTube video. It's only going to be for YouTube about my experience of getting LASIK surgery here in India. So if any of you guys are curious about it, the process, any of that, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel at what is Hey Bell's doing. You can find the link in the episode description and also in today's show notes. But I'm not going to talk about it on the podcast because it's not podcast related. So this is going to be the start of a YouTube series of other things I'm going to share that I have done or experienced or learned. Things outside of mental health because I love talking, (laughs) if you guys haven't noticed. And I've experienced a lot in this life and I love to share helpful information and tips as much as possible. So if you want to learn more, feel free to do that. But in the meantime, if you have a recent win that you want to share with me, feel free to DM me on Instagram or send me an email at whatishaybellsdoing at gmail.com. That's what is H-E-Y-B-A-I-L-S doing at gmail.com so I can give you a shout out here on the show. And if you're not wanting to have your name mentioned or your Instagram mentioned and you want to send it anonymously, head on over to whatishaybellsdoing.com slash the podcast and you can find the win of the week form where you can submit anonymously. But I want to hear from you guys. I want to celebrate y'all. I want to shout you out. I want to be there with you. So please send in your submissions. So in the next episode, we're going to discuss how to cope with losing friends. So this is something that I mentioned, I think, in the last episode back in November. But it is something that I have had to learn how to do in life. As you grow and you change, your friendship circle might also grow and change. And it sucks. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's necessary. Other times it sucks. So we're going to discuss what I have done to learn how to cope with losing friendships over the years. But for now, thank you for tuning into the show. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe, especially if you are tuning in on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And speaking of Apple Podcasts, they have a new, there's a new setting where it doesn't automatically download the episodes. So you'll have to go into the show settings. If you'll do me a quick favor, 
You click on the show, Distressed or Joyful Bailey's Way. And actually, I'm going to walk you through it using my phone right now. So you click on the show and you hit the three little dots right next to it. And you go into settings and you make sure that you have the automatic downloads turned on. You want to go ahead and do that for all new episodes. If you don't already have that done, please, please do me a favor and do that. It really helps for my my stats. <laughs> and I need that, guys. I need this motivation. I need to see that you guys are tuning in and downloading the episodes because if you're not, then I might get discouraged and I might stop. So I, I really need your support and that's the most easiest way to do it. Great grammar. <laughs> it's the easiest way to do it. It's completely free. And if you haven't already given a rating or a review on Audible, on Apple or on Spotify or Google, please, please do so. I would super, super appreciate it. But until next time, take it easy, stay grateful and be joyful. Bye.